I'm Shailen, and I just got married! I've also been sewing everything I can for my wedding. This is part two of how I made my wedding gown. Since you guys already saw the fitting in part one, I'll just jump in. I used silk organza to underline the silk for my dress. What I did was cut out the organza, then baste the piece to the silk. Once that's basted together, I cut out the silk and treated the two fabrics like one. What the organza does is give the silk more stability without affecting the drape. Once all of the bodice pieces are cut out, I again basted them together. This is to keep the silk from slipping when I sew it on the machine. The process for putting the bodice pieces together is the same as part one, where I did the fitting and essentially did the lining, so I'm going to go ahead and make this part pretty quick. When sewing silk, you have to use a much sharper needle so the needle doesn't cause runs on in the fabric. This is the same for pins and all the hand needles that I use during this whole process. Once the bodice pieces are all sewn together, I can sew the lining that I made in part 1 to the first piece. Now I want to mention that you can use different fabric to line your gown, but since I only had 2 weeks to make this, I used the same piece on my fitting for my lining. It saves me time since it already fit, and material. I just seam ripped off the skirt from the fitting so it was only the bodice piece that I sewed together. Once I did all of that nice sewing and pressing and understitching, I noticed that my great idea of having blue boning channels for my something blue could be seen right through the organza and silk. So I had to seam rip that part very carefully and stitch it the other way. The reason I had the boning channels hidden was so I would have the smooth lining against my skin. Now I just have to deal with the boning channels facing out towards my body when I wear it. Oh well. I repeat all the same steps that I just did with the skirt pattern pieces. Unfortunately, I can't find the recording on how I drafted the bottom portion of the skirt, so I'll just post some images of what the pattern pieces look like here. If you have any questions about those in particular, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll try to type up the process for you. Since the skirt wasn't going to be lined like the bodice, I wanted to make sure the seams weren't going to fray. I tried several techniques before settling on one. I tried a zigzag stitch, which didn't look too refined, then added pinking shears, which kind of helped but still looked messy, and finally decided to take some time and do a Hong Kong finish. This is a technique where you sew bias tape onto each seam to cover the exposed seam, keeping it from fraying. It looks really nice when it's done, but it takes a long time. And, since I didn't have bias tape, I had to make some. I made the bias tape from extra cotton I had, and I think I was lucky enough to have just enough fabric for 14 seams that needed to be covered. Bias tape is just fabric that is cut on the bias, or the diagonal. Here I'm making it by cutting a square diagonally and sewing it together so it's a trapezoid. 
I marked the width I need the tape to be, then pinned the trapezoid together so it's a loop. Then the magic happens and I can cut a continuous piece of bias tape that's super duper long. Once that's done, I can finally cover the raw edges with the bias tape I made. Now I can finally baste and sew the skirt to the bodice so I can finally have a dress. Once the dress is put together, I can press the invisible zipper and baste it to the dress. Since I do have a lined bodice, the zipper is essentially sandwiched between the lining and the main fabric, so it's fully hidden once it's sewn. Okay, so I bought this cream lace trim and I loved how it looked against the fabric, but I didn't care for the mesh. So I borrowed a soldering iron to burn off the mesh. Since I have a sweetheart neckline, the trim wouldn't lay flat on it, so I also have to cut out the trim and carefully hand stitch it to the bodice. Once the lace was stitched to the top of the bodice, I tried it on and measured out what I needed for the off the shoulder look. I matched up the trim to what was already stitched to the bodice so it would look seamless. I'm almost done with this dress. For the hem, I pressed it down, stitched it about an eighth of an inch, trimmed it, folded and pressed it down again, and then stitched it again so there would be no raw edge. burnt a hole through my dress. Monday night, right after I had finished hemming the dress, I had the soldering iron and I was still burning off parts of the lace so I can put it 
at the bottom of the dress at the hem. And during that time I decided it would be a great idea to start looking for my veil making stuff. Why I decided to do two things at once, I don't know. But I did and during all of the looking and searching and trying to figure out where all my stuff was, I grabbed the dress, put it on the soldering iron. There's my result. I cried. I don't know what I don't know. I didn't know what I was going to do. I for about an hour, I just sat there crying. Didn't know what to do. Didn't want to do anything saying we can't have a wedding. My dress is burnt. There's nothing I can do about this. The hurricane's coming, and my family doesn't know if they're going to make it. Why bother? I didn't have a backup dress. I don't know what it was, but maybe the fact that I didn't have a backup dress helped because my husband came up to me, grabbed my scissors, and said, tell me what to do. Of course, I looked at him and I said, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to cut silk. You don't know how to sew silk. How are you going to help me make this again? So I seam ripped the panel as seen here. And we recut out the piece together. So now this dress is a labor of love and we were able to get it done. Anyway, obviously I decided not to burn the mesh off the trim for the bottom of the dress at this point. And it's Wednesday before the wedding. We had an 8 hour drive and I got my sewing supplies, my gown in a bag so there couldn't be any more mishaps, thread, scissors, and pins. I just finished the dress just in time during this drive. I hope you guys enjoyed this video on how I made my wedding gown. If so, please like this video. My next video will be about how I DIY'd the rest of my wedding and how I kept it under $5,000. After that, my videos will include some of the pattern sewing that I do, some of the costumes that I'm making for Halloween, and just overall menswear for my husband, and some of the handmade wardrobe that I'm keeping up with for myself.